regular meeting of the Board of Education and the special meeting of the Bullitt County School District Finance Corporation. Um, before we approve the agenda, we have some changes. Uh, first, one we have to addition to consent items, travel number 41, number, number 40 and 41, two travel items. Also, add to the consent items, contracts 6G8, annual maintenance agreement. Another addition to the consent items for contracts 6G9, Spalding University student teacher agreement. And then two items that are already on the agenda, uh, we need to amend. We need to co amend consent item 6H2, donation slash grant list. And then we also need to amend consent item 6Q, use of district property request. So with those additions and amendments noted, uh, I'd like to have a motion to adopt the agenda, please. Motion. I've got a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second. All in favor? Yes. yes. And some, uh, <clears throat> before we start with our presentations, we have uh, some, some things we need to do in-house. We need to move on to the reorganization of the board um, and elect officers for the board. We need to elect a chairman, a vice chairman, and a secretary. Um, any nominations or which one? Yes, chair. For the chair, we'll just do them in order. I'd like to move, uh, Mr. Chairman, that you be re-elected as chair. Second. We've got a motion. It is a motion. Second. We've got a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. 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 And then uh, now we need to uh, have a vice chairman. Any any recommendations for vice chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I would like to nominate Ms. Dolores Ashby. Ms. Dolores Ashby? I will second that. Well, we've got a first and a second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. And, um, <laughs> and then we need to uh, have a uh, secretary. Any ideas for secretary nomination? That would be you. That would be Keith. Okay. So, unless somebody else wants to do it. We've got a motion for Mr. Davis. A second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Mr. Davis will be the secretary. Now we need to uh, have election of officers for the Bullitt County School District Finance Corporation. Uh, we need to have a, a president, a vice president, secretary, treasurer, and then we need another board member. Uh, or all the other board members will be the board of directors. Um, any ideas for president? Mr. Chairman, how is that? Who are those officers right now? Right now? Right now. Right now, I'm the president. Okay. And I believe Dolores um, is the vice president. Traditionally, it's always been the it's usually the chair, chair, vice chair. It's how it has been. I, I move that we just carry those over to the new school year. I second that motion. We have a motion that we just carry those offices over this year. We also have a second. Um, all in favor? Yes. 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 That would be uh, Secretary and Denise is the treasurer. Right. Denise is the treasurer, and then the other board members will be the board of directors. Lorraine, Lorraine did second. Yes. Okay. We know how to move an election, so. <laughs> <laughs> That moves us on to establishment of board meeting time and place. Um, you had in your packet there um, a list of meetings for this year, from February of this year through January of next year. Came in our packet. Um, I don't know if you still have those with you, if you got a chance to look at those. Mr. Chairman, I, I did read a statement. It's, it's kind of rough sometimes, not only on the personnel here to transport equipment set up. It's also a little bit hard on the schools. And I know sometimes we'd like to play around with the idea of just alternating the month of schools. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea, but I think this is a, basically our boardroom. I think we need to make our meetings here. Make them here? And I think normally we do have them here, um, unless there's a special location that's going on. Uh, for instance, the one we had at, at Eastside. Eastside. Um, and if that is the case, you know, then obviously we would have to advertise those meetings. Uh, but I agree. I think this is the boardroom, and this is where the majority of our meetings need to take place. Unless anybody else has something else to say about that. 
I'd okay. like to put that in the form of a motion if, it, if that's necessary. I will put it in just in case. Okay. So we've got a motion that um, our meetings be held help here as a rule, um, knowing, <coughs> noting that there from time to time may be an exception. I've got a motion to have a second. Second. Got a second. All in favor? Yes. 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 Now, it looks like we need a, a board member to serve as legislative network member. I think, uh, Ms. McLaughlin, you've done that previously for a couple years. I would like to see someone else enjoy that privilege. <laughs> 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 How much work is that? For sure, you would, but you, know, you seem to enjoy you what you do. If you've got to do it right, if you yes. do it, right, it, it, it does take some time to correct. <laughs> <laughs> Any volunteers or um, recommendations? I would like to recommend Mr. Hayes. <laughs> yeah. Let's put that in. So we have a motion. I second. Uh, and we have a second <laughs> that uh, Mr. Hayes uh, be our legislative network member. Under Robert's rules of order. Do I have the power to decline? <laughs> Too late. I don't think so. Okay. Well. <laughs> So we have a motion and a second. Um, I guess this time we'll take a vote. All in favor? Yes. yes. Congratulations, Mr. Hayes. Thank you very much. Did you vote four to one time. I'm not sure that on the record. Did you vote no or are you just abstaining? <laughs> and that moves us on to presentations. And um, Mrs. McLaughlin and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. McLaughlin. And uh, Mr. Roberts. Good evening. The Board of Education encourages, oh, okay. Okay. encourages public comment, and anyone is welcome to address the board, but we do ask that you sign up first and have a sign-in sheet that is absolutely blank. Would anyone like to <laughs> be brave and sign up to speak to the board tonight? Anyone at all? Okay. Hearing none, we'll continue with the meeting. Well, we do have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, if he gets, so if he comes in late, he only gets four minutes instead of five. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, we, we got time. I wouldn't need that. It's always a pleasure when you, you can recognize students for their accomplishments and such. And our first student tonight goes to Crossroads Elementary School, and she's a very gifted singer. She's so gifted, in fact, that when she sent in, in, in an audition tape for the Kentucky Children's Course, she was one of very few picked. So Miss Megan White will be going as representative of Bullock County and Crossroads to sing in the Kentucky Children's Course. Would you please go forward, Megan, for your certificate of recognition? <laughs> Kelly teaches at Crossroads. Her parents, Kelly.
Kelly and Brad are with us tonight, and our music teacher, Amy Cuenca, is in the audience as well. She'll be recognized for being a National Forest Certified Teacher. So it's neat that Megan is so talented, and she learns from talented people. So congratulations, Megan. Very proud of you. These next several certificates will be going to Bull Lake Middle School students. They attended the 2013 Kentucky Youth Assembly YMCA um, State Delegation in Louisville. And while there, they introduced a bill that was not only singled out as one of the best bills ever written, it was honored by the state as the most outstanding premier bill. Those students are Katie Rich, Taylor Lavers, Lindsay, sure your name right? Yes. Lindsay Cravens, thank you, and Trevor Goldsmith. All these students are welcome. Trevor, that was you a compliment. Come forward, ladies and gentlemen. Katie is getting two certificates. Katie worked with these fine students right here to write the premier bill. Katie actually was asked to speak as part of the delegation, and he did such a fine job speaking, he was awarded the, the honor of outstanding delegate. Congratulations, Katie. <laughs> so proud of your efforts and your accomplishments. Uh, you represent Absolutely. Bull Cane Schools and Bull Lake so well. Congratulations on such an outstanding no, sure. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. We are going to, not on purpose, but the Mount Washington group will be up a little later, okay, with the robotic presentation. <coughs> Bull East High School has been awarded the distinction of being selected for the National High School of Business Program. And this is something that they actually had to uh, apply for, to participate in. We would like to recognize Mr. Willie Foster, and if she's available, Mr. Mrs. Amanda Comstock, who is the, is she the business chair at Bullies? Is Amanda here? Ms. Comstock, that's up. Ms. Comstock. <laughs> we have so many people to recognize, they had trouble getting it. <laughs> Ms. Foster, will you tell us a little bit about your IR at Bullies, please? Sure. Uh, high School of Business program is put on by the MBA Research Organization. Uh, it will offer business management focused training, which is, will be dual credit, uh, similar to advanced placement courses, but specifically for business. Uh, only the second high school in the state, uh, state of Kentucky to be awarded in the MBA Research High School of Business program. Uh, we're excited. Very, very big deal. What a great opportunity. <laughs> these next individuals, we recognize the students first because we are all about students. But we want to recognize some teachers who've done the most amazing, made the most amazing accomplishment of earning their national forest certification, which is like taking a test for an entire school year <coughs> and they pass with flying colors. First of all, several teachers from uh, Crossroads Elementary School, including Amy Cuenca. <coughs> applause for each one, please. <laughs> Let's 
Leslie White and this, uh, this teacher here both earned their renewal, which is a remarkable accomplishment in itself because not only did they take the time to invest in the original, they also chose to go and renew, which is a, just an incredible feat in itself because all these teachers have their regular schoolwork and their regular classes to prepare for as well. Ms. Karen Lieber German, I suggest you. <laughs> One thing I want, to, I want to go back to the Bullock students just for a second. The parents of each of the Bullock students, please stand up. I'm not going to ask you to embarrass your kids. I just want to say thank you all very much for what you all do, because without your support and guidance of these kids, wow. I mean, you all, your all's efforts at home is very much appreciated and applauded. So thank you all. <laughs> and I believe we'll turn over now to the Mount Washington Middle School Robotics Team and Mr. Gretz. <clears throat> Hi, my name is David Bretz. I teach at Mount Washington Middle School. I am the band director, the arts humanities teacher. I'm also the robotics coach. We are here tonight to showcase what the robotics club does. Um, first thing, what is the robotics club? Robotics club is basically a group of students that gets together and they A, build a robot from scratch, B, program this robot from scratch, and then to make it perform specific tasks on a, on a specific field that's been, that actually changes year in, year out. Every year it's a brand new field and it's a brand new task that they have to, to learn how to, to do and to program. Uh, we also do a real world research project. So what we'd like to do tonight is I'm going to have a couple of the kids come up and they're going to showcase how the robot works, what it looks like, and how they built it. Uh, also, um, one thing you have to understand about FLL and, and this, this uh, partnership with the LEGO Corporation, everything is built and all the ideas are come up with by the student. <coughs> My main job as their coach is just to stay out of their way and if they come up, they have a question once in a while, is to encourage them and try to guide them on, their, on the one way that they do it. Um, but everything you're going to see tonight that these children have done came out of their heads. It is completely their product that they have built, <coughs> that they have come up with and that they've done. Um, we couldn't bring the entire eight foot by four foot playing table up here. That'd be kind of hard. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have three of our guys come up and uh, they're going to showcase, they're going to show you the robot we have, which is completely made out of Legos. And they're going to show you a little bit about how it runs and, and kind of what they do. Come on up here, guys. This is Bradley Edmonds. This is James Pinkley. And this is Andy Lutz. Tell them about your robot. OK, so first off, uh, it's got a triangle design. That's because the triangle is the most stable force in nature. Second thing is we have a sled to reduce friction when turning. <coughs> um, if we had a wheel, it would like scrape against the ground too much and it wouldn't turn at all. <coughs> and then lastly, we have several attachments on here. One which is an arm to go out and retrieve things and then bring it back to the home base on the table. And we also have a box which also attaches onto this and then we can carry stuff in it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It's autonomous. They program it, then they push a button, and it has to run everything by itself. Um, when they put it on the on the playing surface, if they have to reach out and grab it, they get penalty points. Um, once they program this robot, once they put it out and they let it go, it has to autonomously do everything it's supposed to do. Okay. And that is one of the most simplest programs to do. It just goes out hit something and actually gather something and brings it back. We got one that like changes directions. Um, yeah. the these three these three students were the, the main brains in designing the robot and building it and programming it. She'll catch it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Go. It'll be fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Usually there's 
Anyways, space. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Good job, guys. Um, so you understand, there's a little brain on the top of this robot. Um, it's called the NXT. That's the, the brand name from Lego. And uh, that's where all the computer programs are housed in. They're pushing buttons to get to the correct program. Then they push the button, and it actually runs by itself. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? They Excellent. Think that it's competition. Yes, sir. We went to a regional competition, and uh, we did fairly well. Um, there was at the regional competition. There was 48 teams, and this is just this is actually only 25 percent of the score. Is the robot doing that? We're going to go over. I'm going to show you the the uh, research project, which is 50 percent of the score here in a second. But yes, this is a this is actual heads on head competition, sir. <coughs> Um, I think Mount Washington has one. Not yet. Uh, Not yet. Uh, go ahead, sir. In there, it's, uh, Mount Washington started to actually parent. Uh, Spearheaded first. It's kind of a community league, and then Bullet East had one. I'm not sure if Bullet East has one right now or not. The one thing. Bullet East, uh, Bullet East, I had one last year. I think they have two this year. Two this year. Yes, sir. Uh, I believe, is starting one next year. At current time, there's jobs posted for a uh, district wide. What I was like three sort of district wide teams, one team with two coaches from each area. We've not had yet complete interest in that, so we've not pushed maybe quite as much as we want to. It's really uh, a matter of getting, it's hard to coordinate. It'd be awesome if we could have one at every school. Trying to co coordinate it from the whole area is a little tough for people, so I think we're still getting our hands around that. But it's getting more and more interesting, and interest is. So I think we'll, I think at the end of the day, we'll have one at every school. Do other yeah. students in the school ask you guys questions about what you do? Yes, they do. They usually think it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I would think so. Now, what does this lead to, guys? Is it pro I know the programming is relatively straightforward on this NXT. Are you going farther? I know there's a, a Lego a league above the Lego league, right? Yes, sir. That's more in depth where you actually build from scratch. Yes, the next league is not Legos, it's like actual metal and use like real um, life machinery to build much larger robots. Are you interested in doing that? I'm definitely going to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's like a director. So. Yeah, that's kind of where they got the idea from. But anyways, we're going to go on to the next portion, which is actually what we're most excited about. I, this probably doesn't sound really exciting, but this is our research project. 50% uh, of our score at this regional competition is the research project. The FLL gives us a very specific and set real world problem. Uh, two years ago, it was safety of food. Last year, it was senior citizens and how to, do, how to help them live better. This year, it was all about natural disasters and how can we help prevent or minimize the amount of natural disasters in there. Um, this is a research project that was completely thought of by the students, and actually, you're gonna they're gonna actually go through the entire uh, presentation here in just a second. Come on in, guys. Come on. And just for so sorry, I don't have one for everybody, but we have a copy of our our research project. Where can I sit? <laughs> Washington Generals, and this is our Nature's Fury project. I'm Kyron Harper. I'm Andy Lutz. Noah Wooten. I'm Casey Corum. Bradley Edmonds. Zachary Ewell. Dalton Aubrey. James Kingsley. The problem we chose. There were many choices, but it wasn't too hard to choose. We saw wildfires as a problem that there weren't too many solutions for. We also saw that there were too many of them happening. There are many things that cause wildfires, some more likely than others. What starts wildfires? First of all is lightning. Lightning can strike the branches of trees and set them on fire. 
causing a forest fire. Second of all is human environment interactions, such as campfires, cigarettes, arsenating, and the use of survival equipment can also start a forest on fire. And lastly is earthquakes. They can affect human resources like grills, charcoal, and even small fires. When earthquakes are active, they can change the placement of the object, knocking it over, and it causes a forest fire. What causes forest fires to escalate? Natural resources such as leaves, twigs, bark on trees, and branches. Climate including wind, heat, and drought. And for the landscape, if the land is at an angle going uphill, the fire will develop faster because there is less oxygen. In Denver, there is 17% less oxygen at 8,000 feet than at sea level, and at 40% 40, 40 less at 14,000 feet. Forest fire causes unidentified factors 18%, natural factors 1%, arson 14%, agricultural operations 8%, transportation and communications 5%, logging and forestry operations 1%, general public 52%, other causes 1%. Location, location. We chose to focus on forest fires that took place in the state of Colorado. When we first started our project, a lot of things were taking place there, and it was the first thing that came to mind. It seemed to be a place that could be highlighted and helped with a situation like this. <coughs> Pine needles burn at nearly 520 degrees Fahrenheit. Over 2,500 forest fires take place in Colorado per year. The state is 104,000 185 square miles. It is the eighth largest state in the United States. 38,125 square miles of Colorado is forested. Colorado's overall population is around 5,029,196 hundred people. About every 40 years, Colorado experiences a drought it said on Fox News that the number of homes destroyed in the most destructive wildfire in Colorado history has risen to 400, and this happened during June 13, 2013. Our solution, the, we call it the FFRU, the Forest Fire Rescue Unit. Our team has come up with a solution that can help prevent a large number of dangerous forest fires. This, this device includes the thermal camera, or a flirt and moves on a 360 degree pivot. It basically monitors the forest for any unusual temperatures. When the camera senses temperatures that exceed 200 degrees, it will send a signal to the phone it is programmed to send a signal to with the <coughs> help of our glo Global Star Satellite Phone Plan and Technology. The person who received that phone call would attempt to reach the people who are best fitted to deal with the situation. They would then go to the area best the area around which the phone call came from and check out the scene. Hopefully coming back knowing that they they prevented a forest fire. We believe that our invention can reduce the number of forest fires in Colorado. Also, we now we now know it will be save the lives of wildfire. We would respond FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, American Red Cross, 911 services and the Department of Forestry. Existing solutions. There is news that in California they are using something called the fire drone. It is used while firefighters are on the scene. The drone helps firefighters take down an already existing and fairly large fire. It flies over the forest and helps the fighters to find where it would be most smart to start taking on the fire or from what direction the fire is spreading or hitting. The huge difference is the price. It will cost a lot more to build and run the drones than it does for the FFR. Price range, ABS plastic, 2967 for 250 square feet, square inches, enough for the casing of one device. Solar panels, 3996, C batteries, um, 790 for a pack of four. The floor, <coughs> which is $9,856. A relay switch that tells camera to take a picture and then send it with a notice to the cell phones or dispatch. 
uh, two for forty dollars, and a three hundred sixty degree rotating motor, uh, ten ninety nine. Now all it needs is something co to connect all of the devices to cell phones. Um, satellite cell phone plan. We chose Global Star, and the annual fee cost is three hundred dollars. The out of bundle calls is one ninety nine per minute. And the typical annual cost is thirty dollars per year. The chosen plan will start at a rate base a base rate of three hundred dollars per year and includes one hundred and twenty minutes. If the, if additional minutes are needed, each minute will cost one ninety nine. Example: If plan if the plan is exceeded by fifty percent, the additional cost will be one hundred and twenty dollars or sixty minutes multiplied by two dollars. The large crisis cost can be avoided if the majority of subsequ subsequent calls are made <coughs> by other emergency response calls. Cost. To run a single device, it would cost us exactly $9,984.52. Plus an estimated base cost of 300 per year for the satellite phone technology. We've come to an agreement to sell FFRUs for $12,500, which is 20% increase of how much it costs to make the, pr the product in one year of calls. Our device will, will be spread all throughout the forest. An idea we had on the FFRU on these watchtowers, making it easier to space them out in the best way possible. The good things about these watchtowers is that they are already spread out where you need them. We may use the rest of the funds to put the devices in more locations. The total price in the FF put on the FFRUs in these locations is totaled, to be, totaled out to be $359,442.72. Dollars per year for the phone technology. <coughs> who we shared our idea with and who gave us advice. Now, Washington Fire Department helped us come up with ideas to help improve our invention and how we can take it farther. Uh, hmm. The firemen that came were Charles Brucher and Captain Brian Byers. Our team had a visitor come in and talk to all of us about our project. He's up. He's an electrical engineer, captain of the Fern Creek Fire Department, and used to work with the Raytheon Corporation. Raytheon is a defense contractor. They make things for the Army, Air Force, Marines, Navy, and Coast Guard. He helped us work out mechanics of our solution, solution and informed us of what we need to add on the FFRU for it to perform at its best. Our resources were rbidet.org, <coughs> library.thinkquest.org, aspenrecreation.com, csfs.colostate.edu, and foxnews.com. And to find the price range for the device, we used interstateclassics.com, <coughs> 123pawns.com, zorotools.com, FisherCI.com, ShopWildThings.com, and OutfitterSatellite.com. Special <coughs> thanks to Mount Washington Fire Department and Russ Connolly for taking time out of their day to visit and talk to us about our project and how we could improve it in the best way possible. That was our presentation. Um, just so you'll know, what, what, what we've done here is um, at the regional competition, we won the Innovative Solution Award. Um, so they were pretty pretty pumped up about that. Um, we've actually had several several parties interested in, in helping us to get a patent for our device. So we're in the process of trying to patent it out. So anybody watching on the internet, too bad. Um, <laughs> so, um, but we are, we have already contacted several several organizations that are helping us get a patent for our device. But that's not any questions. Are these all papers? Uh, no, sir. 
Um, Kyron's in seventh grade, correct? Uh, Zach's in seventh grade. She's in sixth grade. Uh, uh, Mr. Pinkley here is in sixth grade. So we do have, it's, it's a mix. So you are not in Yes, sir. David Escher is under. Suck with me into it. No, okay. But no, sir, I'm a volunteer. They do, they do really good. Like I said, the students do all the work. Any questions? Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate appreciate your patience and your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.
and that's we hard. said this pretty much at the fiscal court, but in, in, in a column and letters and all that stuff. But uh, you all do need to know that it's very important what you do, and uh, all of us that work for you very much appreciate your service and the time you have to put into it. You're welcome. There is the uh, Barbara. I just got this in today. This is from. Uh, the city of Mount Washington, we're going to have this frame and put in the display case there, so I'll trade you. Okay. And I believe that's all I have tonight. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The bulk of the things to go to these guys out here, though, these <coughs> teachers and these principals who are in the trenches every day, so um, they see the detail. We just kind of look at the big picture, but they do the hard stuff, so we thank you guys. Um, I guess that moves us on to a College and Career Center's construction update. Thank you, Mr. Wise. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Okay, as usual, we're going to start with North Bullet. Um, <coughs> there we go. First off, I, I'd just like to commend the contractor for at both sides, same company for really stepping up in this inclement weather that we've had. Um, they've done a great job getting the buildings dried in, getting this basic skin together and dried in. They've gone out, they've bought um, a lot of portable heaters in order to keep the work going inside. Um, I don't know if you'll recall, but that was the main goal that they had been working with. I've reported that, I think, the past couple of months. And they were able to complete that. So um, kudos to the contractor for that. This is uh, the overall exterior view at North Bullet. Um, here, this area right here is the flexible layers. <coughs> Just beyond that wall there is the flexible classrooms. Um, these areas here is where we will have our polished CMU material um, coming across these elements here and onto that volume there will be metal panels and uh, this area right here will be the administrative offices and basically be a, a glass box type of element against the, the masonry there behind it. Going through some interior photos, don't know if you all remember from our last photos, but there was a lot of sky in those photos um, from the inside. Fortunately, the contractors has been able to, again, get the building dried in and um, able to keep working. I guess the big story in general with both projects is a lot of mechanical electrical plumbing work inside the building. Obviously, we really aren't ready for finishes or anything like that. Uh, but this will be the flexible labs. Um, nice, big, will it? big windows, um, big volume there, oops, there we go. Uh, Multi-purpose room, again, a lot of mechanical equipment going in, duct work, et cetera. Um, and I'm just gonna run through these. Again, showing a lot of progress in the above ceiling areas, electrical, sprinkler, uh, mechanical work going on. This is the corridor between the flex labs that would be there to the left and the multi-purpose room that would be to the right. Here's the equipment platform. Um, again, us, our engineers, we were just there this past Friday, uh, had a pre-installation meeting for the geothermal drilling, had a pre-installation meeting for the data network and um, our engineers went through the building and they were completely happy with um, the quality of the workmanship, how clean and neat all of the work is going on inside the building there. Um, you can see a couple of the um, equipment pads for the heat pumps that will serve the gymnasium and then back here a big air handling unit we'll be seeing there. Moving on to Bullet East, uh, again, so a lot of similar, both projects in general at the same stage. Um, not sort of a, a dark photo there, but this is a lot of exterior brick here. 
um, looking at that same area, they haven't started their structural steel or anything for that glass piece that I pointed out uh, in the last set that's going to go right there. And then down this side over here, again, will be the flexible <coughs> items. Um, this is the inside of the flexible classrooms. Flexible classrooms are the more nicer finished spaces. You can see um, hat channels back here on this back wall because all of these spaces will be drywall rather than masonry, um, carpeting, um, nicer lighting, etc. in these rooms. Like, once again, these are sub, oops, subdivided with operable partitions and there are the support beams for the operable partitions for that room. Um, this is the gallery space. Um, I apologize for the dark photos. I didn't think that they were that, quite that dark. But um, here immediately to the left in the foreground will be the um, uh, internet cafe right there. Um, back over on this side are those flexible classrooms that we just came out of. Um, the connecting corridor, you can see the existing building here, and connecting corridor back uh, connecting our new College and Career Center to the existing building. And again, um, just a lot of good workmanship on the part of the plumbers, uh, the sheet metal workers, um, sprinkler contractor, etc. Uh, again, our, our guys were very well pleased with the quality of the workmanship. And then again, not to mention um, the efforts that were made to get the building such that this work could be taking place right now and continuing on through this horrible, unusual winter that we've had. And then that's Bullet Central. Did want to just bring up just so that you know, at Bullet East, uh, we, as a part of our meeting there on Friday, contractor thinks that they have found some unsuitable soil that's right where um, they enter and exit the site. Um, it is a, a big issue for them because it, it's, it will impede progress. Uh, for if you know just moving around through there there's a lot of exterior equipment that needs to be set up in that area um, our position at this time is that we don't know if this if the condition of that area is because of basically lack of maintenance of the site on the part of the contractor or if it is truly unsuitable CH soils and uh, CH, CH soils is, are the, the bad soils. I don't know. I could get that to you if you would like. I'm sorry? You did get it. Yeah. CH. <laughs> Chuck soils. Yeah. It's Chuck or Club. CL soils. Uh, in this area, were they on the construction of the original building? Was where they I mean, they mess. They put these soils over there, just like they did at Bullet Central. I mean, they they move the soil over there. This, this area, had the engineer said that this area was it really needs to be. Have the engineer said that. Have the engineer said that this they area need to replace this soil? We don't. We haven't found that out yet. Found that out? Yeah, that is the testing that we are getting done, <coughs> um, so that we know whether or not there has been the, the an engineer has been there. The the engineer has recommended that it be undercut and put back with stone. Uh, the contractor did say that through the course of the project so far, they have put, I think, four to five dump truck loads of stone in that area. And they just can't maintain a firm base to work off of over there. Um, so once we get the testing done, we'll know what direction to go. I'll, I'll keep you on the form with regard to that. But that is, yes, ma'am, yes. So 
I'll keep you all informed on that. The good news over there is that we do have some credit uh, for that site for some earthwork um, that we can use against any potential change order that may come from this most recent item. Uh, I believe we have about $10,000 in credit right now for work that didn't need to be done. And then in addition to that, uh, the water line that was shown on the existing drawings for the building was actually not there and we were able to revise the location of that water line such that we were able to get a nice credit on that too. So those are items that are still going to be coming to the board. $22,000 for the water line. The city area we're talking about is no longer just supposed to be dealt with it in Fort Central? No, ma'am, nothing like that. No. Nothing at yeah. all. Oh, I heard it. Uh, it's like I heard 17,000. Mm. 17, 18,000. That's right. Yes. That's the possibility. So we'll be letting you know about that and kind of how that goes. Any questions at all about North Boy, Boy East? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Okay. I'll update you on Bullet Central. Again, I'd like to follow. I wish I had a roof. But we will get you a roof. It's in the works. Um, this is a shot of um, the College and Career Center, Bullet Central, looking north. Um, the uh, remedial site, remedial work is back to existing grade, back to where it was when we started. Close to being back to exist, very close. Um, as far as quantities, as of January 16th, uh, confirmed by the special inspector that is SNME, uh, 3,265 cubic yards have been um, taken out of there and replaced. There's a, a triangle area from the existing, um, there's an existing fire hydrant and where that existing water line is that they haven't been able to get into because they want to stay away from the existing line. Um, the estimate on that is 500 cubic yards. That would finish it off. That's, that's what we've been told. However, um, the general contractor thinks it could be as much as 1,200. So we're 700 cubic yards off on what we think it's gonna to take to finish it out. Um, the 500, would get us to 3,765. And if you remember the worst case scenario we were told, or we talked about rather, was 6,600 cubic yards. If the higher amount, the 1,200, that would take it to 4,465. So we're still gonna be under the, the worst case scenario, but uh, it's still quite a bit of earthwork. Um, so I wanna, I'll show you a few slides here to, I don't know, get you so what else does that translate? I don't know, the, the big number you said, 6,600, translated to 350,000. 390. Almost 400. 400. Okay, then, so half of that's half that. Is that about right? About, yes. Um, <laughs> Not cubic yards, but money. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> I don't care about cubic yards. The, the amount <laughs> that we verified and we're comfortable with and the special engineer is verified is um, 148,845 dollars. There is the remaining work that needs to come out and then um, the rest of the equation <coughs> is the difference between earth fill and the rock, the DGA is more expensive. Remember we, we talked about we couldn't do the layer cake, so once we switched, once they told us it's time to switch, the weather's not good enough to keep earth, we have to stay with it. So there's gonna be a, that's another little bit of an unknown um, as far as quantities. 
Um, we've had several meetings. Um, we're not quite in agreement. Like I said, we're already, we're 700 cubic yards difference on what we think it'll take. Um, all I can tell you to this point, or to January 16th, is the 148. Uh, also because of the weather and just mainly weather, there hasn't been much at all done since that January 16th. So that's kind of our mark right now where we're comfortable where we are. So other than the weather being an issue, what's the, what is are we waiting on somebody about that water line or something? We're now waiting on somebody else. We're talking daily to the contractor to push them along if they're uh, I thought the Little Water Company still had the design going. Little so Water's there. got some work that they're just about finished with. Okay. They pretty much took our drawings. They're following the same path that we did. Um, they have to put it on their drawings and their specs and bless that, so that's in the works. And the, con the subcontractor that Marilla Construction wants to use, they're still trying to get that contractor certified by local water. They haven't been able to do that. If they can't get that contractor certified, then well, are they in agreement to go with somebody else? Um, they have uh, someone else that's qualified, but they're telling us that's, that'll cost more. That's what they're telling us from their opinion. Um, so that we're, we're hung up on that issue with them. How much more do we know? They told us 18,000 to go with, other, with Phillips Brothers, who's the contractor that did this work. 18,000, but what's in the contract? Yes. And we're, I don't know how spoke, but we're not in agreement with their opinion on that. Just like we're not quite in agreement on some of these other things. So. Okay, so where are we on our timeline? They have um, asked for 72 extra days because of this site work. And we're not in agreement on that one. A lot yet to work out. Uh -huh. Love to. I really was, didn't want to bringing bad news because we're still working through some of these <coughs> disagreements. Um, Brett and I both have had a number of conversations and meetings um, and trying to keep the project progressing at the same time. But like you all say, agree to disagree respectfully. We need to keep it that way because obviously we want the project to progress. Right? No, I, you know, I don't know very much, but I've been watching and it doesn't look like there's much happening. I just, I wonder what was going on. Well, let me show you a few other slides. It, this is in pretty good shape. Um, and then there's some pretty good work to show you back at the kitchen cafeteria. Um, I want to give you, uh, show you this shot because uh, these exist, these new manhole covers show you where the new grade will be. Again, the building pad is back to existing what it used to be. So we've still got to come up another three feet or so to get it to the new elevation. And that has to come up with the, with the, the dense grade. With the dense grade aggregate with the rock. Oh, so there's quite a bit. Rock. There's um, That's in the contract. <coughs> except for the difference in the price. Yes. Yes. So we're talking what? Like 2 feet? Uh, about three feet. Uh, well, at the, at the, it's deceiving. It, it looks fairly flat, but you start back at the existing building where it's just about level, and when you you go to the west, you're three or four feet lower. Even though you think it's flat, it it drops. Yeah. So. We, you, you've replaced as far out as we need to replace. Is that right? Other than just where the water line is. Yes. Right. Except for the one little triangle. See where the. Uh, that, right, right. That right, there's a right. triangle right there that needs to be replaced. I'm thinking it's five hundred. So we're not going to have any more surprises on the website. I would really like to call the but not that. So 
There's a, if you look back towards Highway 44, that is a very nice building. Doesn't get much better. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk more about the pen or do you want to look at some? No, let's look at that. New kitchen cafeteria. Uh, if you remember last time I showed you, this was just uh, roughed in plumbing and electrical lines. Now there's concrete slab. Masonry work has started. Of course, when it gets too cold, um, even with temporary <coughs> means outside like this, they, they just cannot do masonry work. Okay. Uh, there's like a few picture. things. You, I like this picture there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, some progress here. Um, you looking back uh, the other way, that will be the new serving area. Looking back towards the cafeteria. Um, that's looking into what will be the new kitchen, or looking from the new kitchen back towards the old, you see the, the chimney, which will eventually come down. That's a uh, loading dock. That will have, a, of course, that will have a roof over it. That will be covered. <laughs> yeah, <it'll> be covered. <laughs> um, I want a roof tell us Joe's project. Um, in the relationship there, a new corridor between the existing ag uh, and fam or youth service center building and the new kitchen. So um, that's where we are um, as of 22nd. Um, there's not a whole lot to be honest with you going on right now. There's some work going on interior, some electrical work above ceiling. Um, it's warm up tomorrow, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do have, um, unless we want to talk more about this, I've got a few others of some, some pretty pictures to show you. Oh, yeah, I like this one. Um, still like to remind that one's got a roof on it. That one's got a roof. If we can, like I said before, uh, somewhat stay focused on the end product, you're going to be proud of this project and it's, it's going to be fine. It's not going to be easy getting there, as we found out, but. Uh, it's going to be nice once all said and done. Um, but the school colors, and Joey, if you want to pipe in here, we, um, and Joe had talked about these. These are the metal panels. Um, oh, no, not metal panels, excuse me. The metal goes between their black. This polished stone or uh, masonry won't probably, that looks a little dark to me. Uh, the color we're looking at is probably a little bit more gray. But we did go with the black uh, panels. Those are metal. Pick up on the school colors. <coughs> um, got some interior shots. Um, this, the new media center, which used to be the old cafeteria. <coughs> this would be the corridor leading to the college and career center. I really like that nervous system is hard. Um, we're putting a new quarter in there. This, this one here is the uh, lounge area that will um, come out front of um, Bullet Central. It'll be a raised area, skylight to let some natural light in there. Do you have anything you want to add? Is there the floor material underneath that, that circle? This one or this one? Yeah, both. I believe it's uh, VCT, but it's bigger panels. Yes, yeah, it's, it's bigger. Brazilian wood. What's that? Brazilian. Uh, Brazilian wood. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, made to look like wood, but it's actually it's a Brazilian. It's a vinyl product. <coughs> and it has the. It's not square. No, they're it's it's in plain plastic. <coughs> so that piece where the chairs are, that's sticking out from the front of the cat cafeteria right now? Kind of, yes, yeah. I don't know if I've I don't, I, I, see a, I don't have it in this room. It kind of mimics the front that's already on the office, right? Mm -hmm. um, we needed to get a little bit more square footage to meet KDE minimums to make that cafeteria uh, a library. So we just did a simple 
popped out space and put the informal seating in there. I'm trying to give it that college look. Um, brought some brick inside. You'll see that in college buildings sometime. So, that's all I have right now. I'll try to get you that roof as soon as we can. <laughs> all right. Brett. I just want to add a few things. Uh, these cold temperatures right now, uh, we can't put any fill in of anything. DGA has to be wet so it's compact and everything's frozen, you can't do it. On the other hand, I'd like to thank the board for that uh, little water company giving them their easement because if you didn't know, it paid off for itself about a week and a half ago. We had a water main bus and they covered it all, everybody. So I want to make sure you don't do that. Thank you. Thank you. You got your homework. Um, all right, we've uh, done this on the audience comments, and we've had um, one gentleman sign up to speak, uh, Mr. Alex. What is it? Thank you for allowing me to address you despite my tardiness, and thank you, Lorraine, for pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> We're just glad you made it. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, I think DCPS is one of the greatest school districts in the state, and I'm very proud to have been a product of this fine school district. Um, many of you know me. Uh, my name's Alex Winsett, um, and uh, <coughs> I grew up in Bullock County, a community I care deeply about, and uh, this community has always instilled a sense of civic value in me, and the school system has always instilled a great sense of civic value in me. And on Friday, I signed up to run for the 26th district of the Kentucky House of Representatives. Um, I just wanted to Thanks for that. <laughs> I just wanted to um, let everybody know, and the board in particular, that uh, I am totally behind this district. You guys have been fantastic stewards of taxpayer dollars, have done wonderful jobs making sure that our kids are coming up and that they have new opportunities and that they're able to compete in this competitive job market. And um, in addition to just introducing myself, I said I was going to keep this brief, but <laughs> um, I just want to um, let everybody know, and the board in particular, that I'm always around and I will be around. I will be visible. If you ever have a comment for me, a question, a concern that um, I can take to Frankfurt if I should be so lucky as to get elected, I would gladly do that. And even now, in my capacity as uh, a Bullet County, and I'll do whatever I can to um, to help you out, to get you information, and uh, to uh, be a good neighbor. So uh, I appreciate the time, and um, like I said, if anybody sees me out and about, uh, if you need absolutely anything, just give me a holler. Thank you. Thank you. And that moves us on to uh, superintendent's report, Mr. Davis. Uh, nothing new to reports. Okay. Anything uh, else from the board? Okay. Uh, this moment. Then that moves us on to consent items. Don't forget the three additions and the two amendments to the consent items. I'll give you a moment to just peruse those real quick. <coughs> Yes. Concerning one of my favorite topics, it seems like the uh, <coughs> school buses. Uh, kind of except we've done 107 trips on this particular agenda to approve, and I think one of them uses the Fuller County fans, and the rest of them go to common carriers. Some form or another. Right. I understand. You know, we 
have one of the common carriers that was in the news lately that had said we're not going to use? That's correct. Okay. I, and I guess that leads to my question. What type of uh, validation do we have on all the rest of the common carriers that we use as far as their safety and upkeep and so on and so forth? <coughs> Those are monitored through uh, the director of transportation as well as other people have access to the website. It's actually monitored through the national the federal safety standards board and they're listed on there and each month. You, anytime you go on there and see the common carriers, their uh, standing, and at that the last time I checked, the only one that was discounted was Commonwealth. Okay. I think it's business. They don't have Right. Yeah, but not. Becky, I'm sorry, I may missed it. How long you said they're monitored um, by you and the director of transportation? How often are they monitored? Well, I can't say that we've often monitored them. It's just brought, you know, recently with the Commonwealth incident that we need to take a closer look at them, at least watch monthly to see if anything changes. I, I think that, I'm sorry. Do they provide any sort of a uh, maintenance scheduling <coughs> for buses? I think the last time I looked on there, you could see their safety and maintenance log. Okay. And, and those companies are responsible for submitting that, for monitoring there, not here. It's not monitored locally. Yeah, they're, the common carriers are licensed through the state. Not right. We don't have the capacity at all to monitor right. their safety records. Like and are they being okay is that they turn in all their paperwork to this right. Right. and am i safe to assume that uh, commonwealth was okay prior to their to do i actually don't know that yet. that chances may be right. that they could have been the new stories from that fellow that uh, had used tires out of a dumpster and uh, all that is pretty horrifying he admitted that he had done his paperwork and he admitted that he actually burned his records and all kinds of weird things. And I, I, I guess, I, I think a summer or so ago when I followed, I guess it was the Bullet East baseball team, and they were under a common carrier, and I, I see coolers stacked up in the back, and it's, you know, the state just does not recognize that. That's, not their fault. That's our fault. To tell the kids not to do that. Kids will do better if they probably have to. Do. I, 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 did we didn't we look into this? Yeah. What what was the, when was that and what was the result? You mean was the, the, about using common carriers versus ours? I thought we had a committee. Or oh something. yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, and it's it, it, it's really just a it's a tough thing. I mean, we, we've got labor laws and you know, wages. It, it, it's tough. Hope that we are monitoring these other outside carriers that just want to bring that to light. Because I, I don't want Bullock County to be caught in their pants now, so to speak. The ignorance of one of the common carriers that we are doing. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Anybody else? If not, um, do I have a recommendation? I did want to note uh, a lot of that travel, if you, if you looked at the places they were going, much higher level. I mean, yes. I, I, oh, yeah. I meant to comment on it. It looks like the quality is definitely improved. Yeah, very impressive. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, there's a few of them I wouldn't <laughs> mind going on. It's a chaperone. Oh, yeah, I thought that too. Miss Holker's here. Miss Holker's here. I'm trying to get a route. He wants to volunteer the chaperone on the field trip. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> those of you in the audience who have been requesting to take a trip to Europe. Yeah, and that's the one I want to volunteer. Do you want to go on, Mr. Hayes? Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. I've been there, so I can help out. Your experience matters. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. All right, have a recommendation. Uh, Free consent items as presented, noting that all items have been studied with individual recommendations and rationale being provided prior to the meeting in the full board packet. January 21st, 2014, along with the update tonight, which is available for public inspection upon request. We have a recommendation. Um, is there a motion? Motion. Okay. 
I've got a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a second by Mr. McLaughlin. All in favor? Yes. <coughs> um, we have no unfinished business. Moves us on to new business um, and physical activity and nutrition assessments. Ms. Ms. Kara, Kara, 12 by 12 at JCTC, has earned enough credits to satisfy Bullitt County Diploma requirements with a 3.09 GPA and is considered college ready. Uh, she just would like to graduate early so she can address the medical situation and start college on time as well. Thank you. We have a recommendation. Uh, recommend approval of the early graduation request of Christian Broman as presented. I think her mom is back here. Yes, we have a, we have something to say. I don't know about a close thing that you're not. I mean, she just needed to graduate because she couldn't having that surgery and she thought she would be able to, that she was missing so much school that she wouldn't be able to catch up. It's ready to go. Good deal. Okay. We have a motion already from Mr. Hayes. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a second from Ms. McLaughlin? All in favor? Yes. 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 Good. 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 And that moves us on now to the preschool request for additional staff at Shepherdsville, Missouri. Presented his request to staff at Shepherd's Hill Elementary School with the second preschool assistant, preschool director Sherry Hamilton, provided details as to the need for position. Um, the Human Resources Department, we non renew all the second preschool assistants at the end of each year in an effort to avoid overstaffing, knowing that needs such as this may require adding some positions to meet student needs throughout the year. Do I have a recommendation? I approve the request for a second preschool assistant at Shepherd Hill Elementary is presented. Can we do have a recommendation? Is there a motion? Motion. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Yes. 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 And that moves us on to um, MMD program request for additional staff at East Side Middle School. Submitted as a request to staff East Side Middle School's MMD program with an additional three hour instructional assistant. Funding is available in IBFB for one year only. Additional information has been provided. Okay. And is there a recommendation? Approve the request for a three hour instructional assistant for East Side Middle School's MMD program. I have a recommendation. Is there a motion? Motion. I have a motion from Ms. McLaughlin. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. And one of the items we've all been waiting for, the 2013-14 revised school calendar. Well, you'll see it again. However, <laughs> 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 presented is a revised 13-14 school calendar for board review as a result of inclement weather on December 6th and 10th, January 6th, 7th, 17th, 22nd, 23rd, we'll be using the professional development day March 28th as a makeup day. We'll make May 20th primary election day a professional development day as allowed under KRS 158.070 <coughs> subsection 6 subsection A. School shall be closed on the day of primary election and the day may be used as a professional development day. We'll be adding May 22nd as an instructional day and using May 23rd, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, and June 2nd as makeup days. At this time, the last day for students will be Monday, June 2nd, and closing day for students will be Tuesday, June 3rd. And this is presented for the board's review only, as further revisions are expected. 
so maybe not. Fingers crossed. And that moves us on to the proposed 2014-15 school calendar. The proposed 1415 school calendar developed by the District Calendar Committee for Board Review and Approval is presented. The calendar contains 187 days, includes 170 instructional days, 7 planning days, 4 professional development days, 4 holidays, 1 opening day, and 1 closing day. A minimum of 1,062 instructional hours and 9 potential makeup days. The committee is asking the board to approve the addition of five minutes of instructional time to the school day to ensure all schools have a minimum of 1,062 instructional hours. To ensure the district is in compliance with statute and regulation, review of any action taken by the 2014 General Assembly will be done and the number of instructional hours on each school's master schedule for the 14-15 school year will be verified. A copy of the tentative 15-16 school calendar is also presented for review this time. Statutes and regulations. Mm -hmm. Do we have a recommendation? Uh, approve the proposed 2014-2015 school calendar is presented. Do we have a recommendation? Do I have a motion? Do we have some discussion? Do we have some yeah. discussion? There. I've got only uh, one question. Let me grab my hand. Mr. Davis, is this going to affect classified number of days? No, sir. Uh, so we're not? Unless you all decide to do differently, my recommendation would be to not affect any classified staff. So they would be classified would be doing the same days as or, or yes. some days. during a, during they those school like days, they, right? They will, like the transportation staff would still will do training or cleaning or whatever, and the, and the kitchen staff as well. Didn't feel like it was fair to try to try to take uh, well, take that, away that's, from that. that's the big question. Yeah. Seems like among a lot of uh, people that I've talked to, is you know, are anyone going to get cut higher? Right? Right. No, no, not at all. We'll still have we'll have significant savings from fuel from those right. days. We won't be running the buses, and we'll lose. You know, we need to be sure and understand uh, Miss Bowles' program, the food service program, will lose some revenue, and she feels like she can handle that uh, loss of revenue because there'll be five fewer days where we're serving food. So, so all of our classified people will get what they normally get. Yes, we like that. Yeah. Uh, PD day or PD day for staff. And, there, and there's some flexibility. I mean, and we, we still don't know exactly how schools will respond because the instructional assistants and some of the school based staff, they may still have things for kids on those right. days that, uh, that they do now during their release days. I think that was the big concern that I also right. had heard. Uh, we're going to get interested in that. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? <clears throat> okay, we've got a recommendation. Do I have a motion? I'll go. Got a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Have a second. All in favor? Yes. 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 That moves us on to 2013-14 Comprehensive District Improvement Plan. Mr. Schultz, good to have you back, sir. Well, I apologize for missing. I was a little bit under the weather during the last academic quarterly meeting, but I understand that uh, my able-bodied SLD team <laughs> took care of it in the <coughs> evening, and that's always good, I guess. <laughs> or maybe not. Uh, but you had the CDF, you got a pretty good idea of what was in the CDF during that night. If you had obviously any other concerns, please share that with us. Otherwise, uh, my recommendation would be to go ahead and prove it as it is and we'll keep working. Any concerns? All right, we have a recommendation uh, for the conference edition improvement plan for 2013 14. We do have a recommendation. Do I have a motion? So moved. Got a motion. <coughs> have a second. second. I have a second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. And then moves on to district facility plan amendment number one, Ms. Sexton. Board approval is requested to reconvene the local planning committee to propose amendments to the district facility plan to consider renovating and adding on to Maryville Elementary and Mount Washington Elementary instead of replacing these facilities with new structures as noted in the current district facility <coughs> plan. As required by 702 KAR 4 180. The composition of the local planning committee has been reviewed and uh, the membership has been adjusted to be in compliance with the requirements of the regulation. The original members of the LPC remain intact except for those that no longer held the current position specified in the regulation. In addition, an advertisement was listed during the weeks of January 13 through the 24th. 2014 to replace the two to replace two of the business community link leaders that were no longer eligible to serve on the LPC and as of today we haven't had any response so we're taking a second avenue to secure the two <coughs> business leaders 
And should the board decide to take that direction, we'll need a board member to replace Gary Goldridge that was on the committee at the time. <laughs> Moves us on to a uh, draft budget uh, for fiscal year 2015. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Included in your packet is the draft budget. Um, pursuant to KRS <coughs> 160.476A, the Board of Education is required to publicly examine anticipated revenues and expenditures for the fiscal year, which will be ending January, uh, for fiscal year 2015 by January 31st, 2014. Um, just briefly, um, this does include a one and a half percent across the board increase to the salary schedules, um, but this is just a projection that could possibly change when the tentative budget is adopted. The uh, Kentucky Teacher Retirement Employer Match is increasing again, and that's another unfunded mandate on cost another uh, $360,174. It contains a contingency of 2.2 million, and then our total draft budget for general fund capital outlay, building fund and food service is $1,101,744,507 for revenues and 106,401,981 for expenses with an unbalanced budget of 4,657,474. We will review all of the departmental budgets and have a more um, better picture of what the state funding is gonna be for SEEK this was done prior to the, the governor's budget, so it's um, it was just an estimate, and it will be revised once we have the final seat numbers, once the legislators pass that. But uh, we will review all the departmental budgets um, before we do the tentative. Supposed to. I don't know what that's what he said. 
The, uh, the government budget proposal is extremely favorable to, to education in general, and uh, it'd be great if it were to be able to pass. It's a long road to hold, I'm sure, for, for the governor and, and his allies and the General Assembly, but uh, it, it includes money for races. It restores us back to where we need to be to see maybe even a little bit better than we were in 2008. It restores textbook uh, professional development, pre expands preschool, lots of lots of good things in the government presentation. Also put in there for technology. Yes. Yeah. Quite a bit for technology. Yeah. technology. Stand for all bands, so it's a, it's a, it's well worth supporting if they can find the revenues to make that happen. And That's apparently, he has cut uh, his proposal cuts a lot of other government services yeah. to yeah. to invest in education, yeah. which is that's how you that's how you get product is invested. Especially when you're lined up better. Do that. <laughs> That was for review only, no action required by this board. That moves us on to family resource and new service center activities. Uh, for your review, the family resource and service center um, state report for fiscal year 2013. And um, it's, it's a summary of all the activities that were provided by our 10 centers. One center is underreported. We had a turnover in staff and the entry task didn't get done before they left. Um, and the uh, Infinite Campus did a wonderful update, and um, which worked well in most categories except for our parent count on this report. <coughs> for some reason, it, it uh, tripled our parent count, so that number is off. And the state is working on fixing that glitch in the system. But um, in addition to the activities on in your packet, uh, the coordinators also serve on local committees, and um, they provide individuals with, uh, individual uh, services to students as well as they working with families on an individual basis. <laughs> if you ever have, ever have any questions about the program, please feel free to ask me. Thank you, Ms. Bidwiser. And that was also for review only, no action required by this board. That moves us on to the 2014-15 staffing plan. Ms. Uber. Presented as a staffing plan for the district for the 2014-2015 school year. Uh, there are three provisions included. One is to clarify a practice that we always do. So the statement was added. Positions are based upon the fifth month enrollment of the previous school year with no subsequent changes as a result of enrollment variations during the school year. Uh, the second revision, um, we're just noting a change that took place at Back and Rock. Um, one clerical position that was at Back for Alternative Center was moved to Riverview Alternative Center and the secretary bookkeeper at Rock was moved to back. So they would just switch. So we wanted to put that in wording in our second plan. And the third revision is to account for the possible recommendation of additional specialized program at the middle level. Language was added to provide some staffing flexibility. Once approved by the board, it will be sent to the Kentucky Department of Education for review. Do we have a recommendation? I approve the 2014-15 staffing plan as presented. There is a recommendation. Do we have a motion? Motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Unanimous. And that moves us on to additional contract year. Uh, for the superintendent, Mr. Davis. Uh, Presented for your consideration, I propose uh, that uh, our contract be extended to the Loudoun KRS 160.3. 350 section 4 the extension allowed in paragraph 16 of our current contract with the end date to June 30th 2018 all of the terms remain the same and it notes there that uh, I enjoy working with the uh, and for the board of education and I feel that we are making uh, significant solid progress in a, in, a, in a pretty good environment and that is at the discretion of the board we have discussion <coughs> questions concerns comments I would like to say that I think uh, we've been very lucky to have a superintendent like Mr. Davis. I think he's done wonders with this district and I don't want him to go anywhere. So that's my comment. And if you all want to talk some more, fine. But I'm going to make a motion that we approve this. Now you can discuss some more. <laughs> <laughs> well. I've raised a number of eyebrows about this time last year on this subject. Um, took a meeting, so to speak. Uh, Mr. Davis has, has presently covered all the way up through 2017. And uh, we will be happy. 
happy. And again, please don't get on me on this. Uh, we will be going through uh, two, of, two of the five members will be going seeking re-election next year. I'd really like to see this be tabled for another year. I mean, what's the difference? Three years, four years. Uh, I, I we can tie a whole new board up with uh, four years. Uh, nothing really against you, Mr. Davis. It's Not really. just <laughs> Not really. Um, it, it, it's just, man, that, that really strings it out for a while. You know? Mr. Mr. Hayes, I'd like to respectfully disagree with you. Oh, sure. Um, <coughs> I don't understand why we should rely on who's going to be elected for the next board. We could, that could be a continuing thing. You know, we're yeah, always going to have new board members, so <coughs> you can't keep pushing things away. It's our responsibility to take care of things now. Well, I, you know, I, I don't want to get into another match on that this year. But, uh, I, you know, I'd really just, I, I, I personally, you know, I personally would like to see a table for another year. Ms. Ashby, Mr. Cole? Well, I have, I have some problems. That it's nothing personal. It's really is not. Of course not. It's just that I'm afraid doing this this way, having you so far out in front of everything, okay, it looks as if we're giving you tenure. Basically, that's what we're doing. Which, basically, the right says she, she was not doing that, which is all right. <coughs> uh, what I see, though, from a teacher standpoint, and from an education standpoint, from a classroom standpoint, what goes on from the staffing of the school and everything else. I see it creating side effects. Now, I really don't want to get into the side effects because I don't want to, I don't open a can't work. Uh, I see side effects that uh, it affects people's attitude toward how they how they teach because they have a superintendent that in essence is really now don't take this the wrong way. But really when you give someone a contract that that's that far out of advance of of this board or any board for that matter. It creates a an uh, illusion or whatever is that Mr. Davis is really not accountable to this board. I respectfully disagree with you. Well, <laughs> according to Kentucky statute, Mr. Uh, Ferris can look it up for you and tell you exactly what it is. I mean, we've looked it up before. Uh, the only way that we can get rid of Mr. At the board, either us or any other board, would be that Mr. Davis commit a felony. Or I'm not sure he's going to do that. Or he leaves on his own volition. Or he leaves on his own, which is his 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 uh, rule to do right. so. But I'm afraid that it it amount it amounts to the fact that he's not accountable to the board, or he does. It may it may cause that. I don't really think it does. With him, but it might it might lead to that. You're you're giving him a blank check for we're too far in advance of the board. The board has no control. It's the board's job to see that he does his job. But he may he could I suppose he could I don't think he does but he could see it as well I don't really have to answer to them or I'm not as attached to them as what it really takes or it should be. Well, that uh, might be true if we didn't disagree with them on things, right, exactly. and we do. Well, and we don't do these things, right? But I, I, I just see, I see side effects that really you can't, you can't foresee. I mean, that's my opposition to it. It's not that I don't want the man to have a job. It's the fact that he's, it, he calls things that put pressure on teachers in classrooms that I really don't want to go into. Right You may answer. Uh, Mr. Coleman, I, I think, again, being as respectful as I can, I, that just doesn't make much sense. Uh, the, one of the reasons for a contract is to provide some sense of stability for the staff so they know what the expectations are going to be going forward. The, the board's a policy-making body. Anytime I get uh, too far out of the, on the leash, uh, 
I get I can get jerked back pretty quickly by a simple vote of the board. It's, it's pretty simple to say uh, we don't like the way you do whatever it is you do, so we're going to change policy to make it not able to do that way anymore. So that's really not an issue. I think that uh, you know boards give superintendents <coughs> contracts for a reason, and that reason is security and stability. And I think that you can argue it, but you'd be wrong to argue that we haven't improved greatly since since I've taken office, and I don't take credit for that. I take some credit for that because it's our team doing that, but but there's just without a doubt, we have increased just more than any similarly sized district in the whole state. There's just no question about it. You can argue about it if you want to, but this team has made it happen. And uh, and having that stability, I think, is positive for the district. Uh, I think I've made it very clear that I want to stay here. Uh, but, uh, but quite honestly, they, you know, one doesn't stay where one's not wanted. And so if, uh, you know, if, if you get your way later on and don't give me contract extensions, then, you know, one has to make those decisions. Ms. Ashby? I uh, really don't agree, uh, Mr. Davis and I have both heads on many things. We don't always agree, and I'm very honest and straightforward with him when I don't agree. Uh, and I think any other board member could do the same. I'm looking at the faces in our leadership team out there in the audience, <clears throat> and I know those folks would feel it was a vote against them and the progress that they've made under Mr. Davis's leadership. We had a district assembly today, and Ms. Uh, Stone gave us some really enlightening information about where this district went under Mr. Davis's leadership. We have made gains that have never been made in this district, in the history of this district, academically, under his leadership. The team he has put together has made that happen. I didn't put that team together, nor did anybody on this board. He put that team together with a lot of thought. And I'm sure as a team, they don't always agree either. But we are a team, and I feel I'm a part of that team. Mr. Davis is the leader. And I would like to continue to follow his leadership and see this district go forward as it has for the last years. Seven. Seven. I don't want to see us slide back. I don't want us to have to decide on finding someone else to keep the momentum going. That's a big question mark as to getting somebody that will keep the momentum going. We are out distancing our neighboring counties academically. And I don't, for one, want to see that change. Not just for me and for what, how it makes us look at the board, but for our children and their future because that's what all this is about. It's about the children of Bullock County and their futures and what they can give to this community and to the world that we live in. We've had examples at this board meeting of what our kids can do and the potential they have. <coughs> and under the leadership of Mr. Davis, I think that will continue. I have no intention of allowing Mr. Davis to go to another school district. I think he needs that security. Teachers have tenure, and that's their security, right? That gives them security in those positions. Why shouldn't somebody who has took us as far as Mr. Davis has not be granted another year extension on his contract? I see no reason not to give it to him. That's my opinion. You know, several board members have stated, several board members have stated that we don't always agree with Mr. Davis, and that's absolutely true. And we tell them when we don't agree with him. Sometimes uh, some of our um, executive sessions are, are not very nice, um, but respectful. But they're respectful. Um, and not only do we not always agree with Mr. Davis, we don't always agree with each other. And when we don't agree with each other, we tell each other. And like our board commitments say, we disagree respectfully. Um, and I agree 
Uh, you know, I mean, and I don't, I hate to bring up bad history, but Mr. Davis's last evaluation wasn't the best evaluation we've ever given him. However, however, he took heed to that, and and he and he knows where we need to go, and 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 I, for one, <coughs> like Ms. Ashby and Ms. McLaughlin, think that Mr. Davis is the one to take us there. And if we have, well, when we have agree disagreements in the future, we will let him know that as well. Um, so with that being said, unless anybody else has any other comments. Being no other discussion, I'd like to call for question, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to take oh, a roll. Oh, you need a second. Pardon me? I made a motion, but yeah, it's not second. Yeah, we've got a second. So second. I've, got, I've got a motion, and I've got a second, and Mr. Hayes has called for a roll call vote. Yes, so. sir. And, and before we do this, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I'd like to ask the audience <laughs> if they would to kindly respect this board and kind of keep the reaction, whichever way the vote goes, just, you know. Last year was just, uh, it was hard. I found that a little. So with that being said, uh, we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, I just we'll go in order um, from the table. Um, Mr. Coleman? No. Mr. Coleman voted no. Ms. McLaughlin? Yes. Yes. Uh, Ms. Ashby? Yes. Yes. Mr. Hayes? No. No. And I vote yes. Second. second. I have a second on favor. Yes. yes. <coughs> Going to executive 